Now let's talk about why and how you might extend and automate your enterprise. ArcGIS helps you integrate and interconnect various digital twin representations. Example, how a resident might see a city block and its neighborhood versus a city planner or a construction engineer or an environmentalist. They're all quite different in terms of the layers of data that they bring in within the same spatial context to analyze, visualize, understand, and make decisions. These digital twins are getting way more complex as they represent our world most closely. Your digital enterprise is becoming more intelligent to help us design and operate a smarter and better world. Today we are going to see how ArcGIS can help you create and expand your intelligent enterprise by applying well-defined and recommended patterns. We'll first see how you can extend, integrate, and infuse and later how you could collaborate across interconnected systems and operate geospatial infrastructures in a very automated manner. Intelligent enterprises need to find answers quickly, which means going from sensors to context, going from sharing to collaboration, and deployment to operations. Automation can help you accelerate this transformation. Let's begin by looking at how you might extend your enterprise, this GIS system itself. The options you have are integrate, where you connect various systems together. These are business processes that could be even driven workflows. And then you could also extend services, where you're extending the core capabilities of the geospatial web services, where clients can access them in a very standardized manner. Or you can infuse models, where you build and deploy, infuse, custom geoprocessing tools or AI models, and standard clients can consume them as web services, as web tools. ArcGIS Enterprise supports all of these patterns as you can see here in this diagram. To integrate, you can set up webhook notifications. You can listen to events of interest in your portal, trigger external events and business processes that are callable via URLs. You can create event-driven automations in this manner. You can see examples of events triggered, as you see in this list here, based on various items, groups, or user changes. Even payloads are delivered as JSON over HTTPS. If you like to extend the capabilities of the geoservices themselves, you could create custom server object extensions or interceptors. They're part of the enterprise SDK for adding to or altering map or image services. We have now added shared instance SOI and SOE support to map services, so your custom code can also benefit from this new pattern. That's very suitable for optimal use of resources during varying loads. And then we have a framework to execute your custom geoprocessing tools, and most recently, a way to build, deploy, and run AI models, as you recently saw in the analytics section. To give you an idea of what's possible using the enterprise SDK, Daniel's going to demo how a custom SOI can be developed on top of a utility network capability to allow multiple editors to collaborate. So over to you, Daniel. Thank you, Jay. Coordinating multiple projects in the field is a daily challenge for utilities. This may also be the case in the GIS. Having multiple users from various teams editing the network in different versions often results in having to deal with conflicts. With the Enterprise SDK, I'm going to show you how you can create a server object interceptor, an SOI, to enhance collaboration and coordination. This SOI will give the ability to visualize the areas being currently edited in all versions. As a GIS administrator, I have created an ArcGIS Pro project that would typically be used by all GIS users within the organization. It references the Naperville Foundation Utility Network Service and has the demo SOI enabled on it. It also references a collaboration layer named Edit Areas that will be populated by the SOI. Here, Nancy and Peter are working on the same portion of the, of the network, each in their own version. On the right, Peter is working on a project design to extend the low voltage line to have more street lights along the boulevard. On the left, Nancy is about to do data integration from a field inspection and she has no idea that Peter is currently working in the same area. The blue rectangles that you see on Peter's map represent dirty areas. Those are automatically created 
when you edit features that participate in a utility network. They simply indicate that the network index may have changed and needs to be rebuilt. This is accomplished by using the validate network topology tool. When Peter executes the tool, the SOI intercepts the call to the REST operation and processes the dirty areas to create a new edit area in the collaboration layer. You see the result as yellow rectangles appeared on both maps. Right away, Nancy is made aware that somebody else is making edits in the area. She can look at the attributes to find out that Peter is the one working there. The edit area will remain until Peter's version is deleted, at which point the SOI will again intercept the call and remove the corresponding entry from the edit area feature class. This demo is powerful yet simple and only requires the use of two interfaces from the Utility Network API. The first one is iBase Network to get access to the dirty area table. And the second one is ID Base Network to get the Utility Network schema version to help query the dirty area table appropriately. I'm currently showing the SOI code in csharp.net, but note that you can accomplish the same thing using the Java API. In this demo, we've seen that it is easy to create a Utility Network collaboration SOI, but you can do a lot more with the Enterprise SDK, including creating your own tracing algorithm. Please visit the Enterprise SDK online guide for more details.